Hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my brand new playlist and I recently uploaded a video that I'm going to cover one playlist which talks about how to become a ninja developer actually there is no such uh, thing of a ninja developer it's just all about what all based best tools and technologies you can use to become a pro level developers let's say you are a fresher you don't know how to use those tools and these techniques and tips and tricks then obviously you will take a longer time duration to complete a task but when you already know the tools techniques tips and tricks then you might be able to finish that task or a particular ticket in maybe less amount of time so it's all about how to optimize things while you are developing first of all how you can write a clean code right because ninja developer i will say someone who can write a code really nicely neat and clean impl implementing solid principles writing the clean test cases writing a clean component writing a clean api is using the best uh, tools best set of tools to get the task done right so recently i was just looking writing about it also so i was thinking i was thinking like okay let's put some videos and this is going to be a continuous playlist i will try to put six or seven good set of videos and then it's like a playlist wherever i see okay this is something which i need to share with the developers which can be helpful for them then i will keep adding them so what all things uh, i was i'm planning to put into this so first of all the toolings toolings means okay what all different uh, required tools you must have on your se setup on your workstation to get any kind of task done because most of the times what we are doing we are actually building an apis building a front end component or writing some test cases so there are uh, different job roles i'm particularly talking about uh, someone who is a developer now developer can be writing a mobile app desktop app web app building a saas platform building a, a web application responsive web app and all those things but the tool sets are really common because most of the time we will be writing components doing the integrations if you are doing a purely front end if you are a back end developer senior experienced then you will be writing apis and maybe also contributing a lot in the full stack development means you are writing a lot on the component side writing the apis and api is not just uh, all about rest maybe a graphql writing a building a microservices all those things you might be doing so all those things are a part of development but how you can do all those things in uh, optimized way i will try to share my experience from my past development journey of uh, at 8 to 10 years like what all things you should really adopt to get these tasks done very easily so first of all the tooling okay i will be taking the reference of the mac you can also if you are using the windows then you have to find the relevant uh, toolings for that so let's talk about tooling then we will talk about how you really work with the version control like git gitlab or maybe a bit bucket whatever your uh, repository system you are using all are using git these are just a uh, git providers we are using gitlab github or git bit bucket and all what should be the branching strategies how your team should adopt because you are not the only one writing the code right so the main thing is then we will talk about the branching strategy then we will talk about okay writing the api development with end to end test cases now your api development can be in just in express nest js koa happy js or any framework you choose one of it then building a component end to end and then writing the test cases for it using jest and all those things we are going to introduce we are going to use these advanced toolings which are provided by in javascript stack the workspaces a mono repo and all because now it's not the time when you are just saying okay i'm a front end developer i'm a back end developer we are a full stack developers who are capable of writing the typescript code for the front end for the back end and we need a single repository that depends on the use case but these mono repo turbo repo concept is more popular and here you will be doing mostly the self learning so it's better you keep only one repository for your front end back end and all kind of service integrations okay so this is the agenda what i'm i will be talking in uh, all along in this series first let's talk about the toolings okay the Ter i terminal or terminal this is a important tool because this you need to play around anything on your command terminal right so i mean uh, you just need to 
think about how you can do how you can do all these things you just need to be good at simple v editor and the terminal here you can do all all sort of commands like i'm just playing with uh, git status similarly you can do git stash right git stash pop here you are what what is the advantage of the terminal first of all you should be good at uh, playing with these terminal commands and on top of that because i terminal will not give you this kind of a look and feel you need to have a terminal i mean jdsh jdsh you need to install on top of that so i will talk about that first so first of all terminal which is i terminal which is already there i think i can show you i terminal mac this you need to install it as a package and then what you can do is you can install a jdsh so jdsh is actually a command terminal it's like you can say a plugin on top of your terminal which will help you on a lot of things its full name is oh my jdsh i really like it and i i was i keep playing and i keep changing my theme whenever i need it and then you can have a new appearance of your terminal and obviously like why i keep switching my vs code themes because we spend most of our time with the vs code and having a different color different fonts attracts us while doing writing a code so similarly uh, you can you can actually install this oh my jdsh and it has a thousands of the plugins available for the vs code for the node js and all and uh, when you open the vs code you can also see this uh, terminal this is also using jdsh terminal because if i do if i go to the same directory cdtk sharma and cdtk sharma.com this is my personal website here you can see you can see the branch name and uh, all these how this appearing how this is appearing you can see the branch name and git right this is appearing because jdsh terminal is supporting it and you can also look into the jdsh file like a bash terminal you might heard heard of so we can just do jdsh rc and this is my jdsh rc config here is actually my theme jdsh theme you can switch these different different themes and you can have a nice fun with uh, oh my jdsh this terminal will give you uh, a funky and fun loving themes that also gives you a nice uh, attractive experience of uh, writing a command line terminal and here i'm just loading nvm what is nvm so nvm is a node version manager and as a javascript developer i need to have node.js installed and i cannot switch between different different node versions without having nvm so the first tool you should install after installing a terminal is git git is already there right so you can also install it through the brew package manager brew install git brew install jdsh or if you are on windows then there should be a command of installing it now uh, nvm why it is important first of all every system should have this nvm command nvm uh, uh, software installed what it does is it will help you to switch to a different node versions because because in my in a whole day i keep switching three to four different node.js versions for my different tasks some projects are using pnpm so i need a version 16.x my old projects of nest.js are using 14.5 and some of my projects which are really legacy which i need to migrate are using 10.x gatsby projects and all so how we do it first of all nvm is installed i can just use nvm use with 16.18.0 right so what i will do is i will just check my version 16.18.0 no now i want to use my 14.5.0 and i will just use node version right so this is how you keep switching the different node versions obviously i'm not asking you to have 10 different node versions but at least two to three which your application need and you can also set the default like this node alias uh, nvm alias default my default is i think 16.18.0 so whenever i open my terminal okay it's 16.18 whenever i open my terminal and i say node minus v i get 14 okay this is the alias set and then i need to use 16.18.0 and then i will just say node minus v 
okay so this is actually a default this is the default i have set so this is the default set to the terminal otherwise what you can do i want to install a new uh, version right so nvm install and then nvm use v let's say 12.0.0 which i'm not going to use so it is installing this 12.0.0 and then what you do is nvm use v 12.0.0 so it will switch your node version to 12.0.0 and then you start using it okay so you also need to be aware when you switch to the versions your global packages won't be available because your all global packages points to your node version right so if you install a global package for the version 16 that won't be available for version 14 you need to install a globally again there okay so what we need we have git okay i just want to type something so we have git then we have nvm and we have jsh these are really a required toolings for developers to get things really flowing with your workstation okay git obviously everybody needs it nvm you must have it jsh uh, with i terminal you must have it okay now what is the next thing in the the tooling is uh, we have vs code now in vs code people ask me okay what is the theme what is the theme and all in my videos which i really don't like much i mean it's like open theme whatever you like you go here and just choose one of it and you are fun with this right because there are millions of plugins available on the vs code the best thing has happened for the developers like us is the the smart editor i used to use atom earlier and then i, I don't remember eclipse and all eight years early earlier uh, I, I used atom then i since last six to seven years i'm just using i think vs code that i can remember so vs code is really powerful which the microsoft has done i really like it this tool i don't like any other tool but vs code is really powerful and it has a really nice plugins and everything is really nice right they keep releasing the packages and i think 99 percent of javascript developers are using vs code so I, I won't talk about much on this but the required plugins so if let's say you are setting up a, a new vs code so and you already have vs code somewhere then you can just use setting syncs there are multiple plugins which are available on the vs code setting sync because i was using vs code on another system and then i got a new laptop and, and then i was i want to synchronize my settings then i think there is something like okay sign into synchronize settings this is really powerful tool because if you are switching to different uh, workstation then you can synchronize with the having account okay different profiles the important plugins but what mostly we use while doing day-to-day -day development plugins themes are really fun loving you can just choose anything you want i keep switching whatever i like uh, mostly i like uh, dracula monocoy pro and all set color theme and we will have some different color so every day when i change the theme i see something else and that gives me okay okay today is i'm just looking at different color it should not be too much heavy on the contrast your code should look nice that's it okay so apart from that the plugin system plugin system is really powerful what all different tools you will need in uh, your application setup right uh, we were writing somewhere i think i lost that here apart from that what you need you may need a, a rest client because you might be writing a front end or a back end you need to test your apis so what you need either you can just use some tools like this insomnia or postman whatever you want or you can just use this rest client which is available there i was just checking okay which one is really nice which rest client is really nice for you guys thunder client i have used it uh, let me just see if i get thunder client okay this one and yeah this is nice because it gives you the nice interface to play around with the apis so here you just send your http get put post it's same as the postman you set your headers authorization headers and all you set your body if you are sending the http post 
i don't need to talk about all these things you already aware but yeah thunder client is really nice if you really want to do the http integrations there are uh, other plugins i won't recommend them i installed this i will disable it because this is not really nice thunder client i enabled it and this is nice when you are playing with the apis new request you got the request from the swagger and you wanted to play with this then you can just hit your apis so it's a get i will send it and i will get the the whole html content okay because it says http get you will get the nice response status code preview it's all about how many parameters you are getting okay headers auth body even you can add some tests that's nice you can add some scripts okay so it's like a real postman like feeling on the vs code or you can use insomnia that's also a nice tool for building the postman build or testing your apis okay now coming next uh, what else we have okay i will add this here thunder client thunder client vs code plugin okay now because if you are just not a really fresher you are using docker and all then you need to install docker desktop on your mac or your windows docker desktop is actually a tool which is uh, helpful and you can install it easily i remember three years back we need to struggle while installing docker now things are very easy you just install docker and if you want to spin up the docker what you will do that's it so it will start your docker and you will start running your commands for docker so for running the commands obviously you will go to your terminal so first let me check if docker is running okay it's running so uh, and i can just see this is my docker setup all the containers and all so docker is a next tool next uh, required tool and you can install it very easily there is just like a step by step okay i can also talk about it it comes with the docker compose and you can play with the docker commands and all right now the in the modern development of 2023 you must have a knowledge of docker also because for the local development setup for the enterprise applications obviously when you are doing a local workstation setup you will have a multiple services front end back end back end couple of back end services you need to set up local database maybe a mongodb postgres mysql so it's better to have a docker containers available so this is what uh, you need and then you need some cli tools let's say if you are interacting with aws services and all then you can have a aws cli heroku cli all the cli tools you can install on the on demand if you really need it but these are the the simple toolings which you need as a full stack developer and if i talk about the plugin system you need to have all the required plugins uh, for the vs code let's say what what else i have on the vs code i have a docker plugin so that i can look for the docker containers what uh, what is running what is dead all the containers volumes images network i can see everything and i can stop any docker container like say i will do docker compose down what it will do it will remove all my containers i can purge the volumes by just clicking on to this so it will purge all the volumes for all the dead containers okay then git lens git lens is like a one single plugin enables all sort of features for you like all the git blam git diff source tree all the features gets enabled with this and thunder client nx nx is uh, i installed just recently while i was just started using the nx mono repos so nx you can install that is giving you the very powerful tool this is really power powerful tool of 2023 because you can automate lot lots of tasks i can show you simple workspace which is enabling which has nx power so i need to go to my setup and i will just go to nest cs microservices and here nx is enabled because this is nx workspace and i can you can see all these packages all these applications and i can start stop applications just by here i can do build 
all the package scripts are available back because when you have mono repo you have 10 different projects it's not easy to switch the directory and uh, run the commands build command deploy commands or running a particular package script so it's better to have some kind of a plugin system apart from that if you are using some if you are using aws so azure and all then the required plugins are available which you can configure from here okay apart from that you just we just have a git git lines nx and rest all you can install your favorite theme and all the required plugins like the bracket dog theme bracket pair colorization so when you highlight it will highlight the brackets node.js extensions you can install so node.js extensions will enable all the extension all the uh, plugins which are required for the node.js development similarly for angular reactive search and you install it okay maybe because there are tons of now plugins just install whatever is required so import cost Impo uh, i will tell you just the important ones import cost is required then you have a prettier prettier rc this prettier is enabled then eslint these all these plugins are already enabled or you enable them because they, that will help you for your day-to-day -day development there is nothing then we have a typescript i think typescript is not a plugin but uh to enable like typescript we to enable the typescript in your vs code so when you are writing a typescript code it automatically compiles keep compiling and showing you the compiler errors that this is the typing error which you see while writing the code and then rest you can just okay let's say you are doing a tailwind and you don't know because tailwind uh, we can't remember each and every class this plugin will help you to auto complete your class name so there are for, for auto complete there are thousands of the plugins auto complete your react component auto complete html css everything right so this is all about the tooling platform like what all different tools you must have for your development setup and now in the next video let's bootstrap a simple app and then we will talk about how what you call it as a baseline uh, application how you can baseline a simple project having everything required and removing everything which is not required so you should have a clean package json clean package versioning and all the required packages which are required for react nascs or node.js development including the testing uh, linting all the prettier eslint plugins and all